I'm Peter Block at ACC 16 and with me is Glenn Levine and we're talking about dual antiplatelet therapy. The ACC has just released the guideline, the focused update actually, Glenn, on dual antiplatelet, dual antiplatelet therapy. So I'm going to turn around and just simply ask you uh, sort of to go over what this really means and what was said in this update. So this focused update covers and updates all of the recommendations on duration of DAPT in prior six guidelines. Basically, it's based on the results of 11 recent studies that have looked at shorter or longer duration DAPT after stenting, plus one very large study looking at prolonged DAPT post-MI. So lots of data, lots of studies. You tried to put them all together, sort of like um, compound, compounding all of them. And what did you come up with? Because obviously this is a complex area and there's still a lot of controversy about what the right thing to do actually is. So in essence, the most important thing is for practitioners to weigh the benefit-risk ratio, benefit mainly being decreased in ischemic events, particularly MI and stent thrombosis, risk mainly ble being bleeding events, to weigh those and decide whether the patient should be treated with what I would call a standard duration of DAPT or a shorter duration of DAPT or potentially a longer duration of DAPT. Okay, so I'm going to put you on the carpet here a little bit, Glenn. What is uh, short duration, standard duration, and long duration? Because three months, six months, nine months has always been sort of a gray zone. How do you define those? So in most patients, what we would refer to as standard duration would still be 12 months. In patients with stable ischemic heart disease treated with the newer drug-eluting stents, standard is now six months. So shorter would be on the order of three to six months, and longer would be greater than 12 months. Okay, so when you looked at all of those data, uh, what comes out of this? If I had to ask you, okay, you're now nailed to the wall and you're gonna give me the short answer of what you really can learn from this focused update, what would you say? So first, the newer drug-eluting stents have clearly a lower thrombogenicity than the first generation drug-eluting stents, which our prior recommendations were based on. And so that also shapes our guidelines. So you would say maybe those could have shorter duration? Right. For stable ischemic heart disease patients, we now recommend six months instead of 12 months as a standard. Okay. And what about the standard one year? So one year is still recommended in patients with acute coronary syndromes, including those who undergo stent implantation. We also now suggest one year in patients post-cabbage for treatment of acute coronary syndrome. Okay. That leaves one last group, and that's the long-term dual antiplatelet therapy group. Who are those? So those are patients at increased ischemic risk and post-stent those could include patients who continue to smoke, who have diabetes and have other risk factors, as well as who have technical factors related to the stent and the number of stents and where the stent was placed. And the whole issue obviously still has to do with what their risk for bleeding is as well. Exactly, and a patient at high bleeding risk unless they're at increased ischemic risk, certainly we would not suggest prolonged DAPT in that patient. Okay, so it seems to me we're finally getting our hands around this whole dual antiplatelet therapy business, and uh, hopefully with a little bit of judgment, because it's good to know judgment still plays a role here. Would you agree? Yes, I would completely agree, and an important emphasis and a continued emphasis is for practitioners to use their clinical judgment, and in our recommendations, I think we specifically give people the leeway to use clinical judgment. Thank you, Glenn.